Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Watch by Ashley. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna to be discussing Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry Darling. So this film actually left me with a lot to worry about. Um, I don't know about you, there's been so much drama regarding this movie, uh, whether it was pre-production or after the release, it's just been such a mess and such a nightmare for Warner Brothers. They gave Olivia Wilde a budget of $35 million for this movie. Uh, in the box office, it did pretty well. It has generated so far $85 million. Currently, it's available on video on demand, so you can catch it on YouTube or Apple TV. I think in a couple of weeks, it'll also be available on HBO Max. And why I say it would give Warner Brothers a bit of a headache is because there's just been so much dirty laundry aired for this movie. I mean, you have the director dating one of the male leads, you have the director having a fallout with the lead actress, and you had the director say that she had to fire Shia LaBeouf due to violent outbursts, which has actually been debunked and is not true at all. So it's just been like so many external factors that really take away from the actual film. You know, I was really excited to see this film when I saw the initial trailer. I liked the idea of a nice young couple living in this 1950s themed kind of neighborhood and this mystery of what the husband does during the day. Like to me, that was enough to spark my interest, especially when you have the cast of Florence Pugh, uh, Harry Styles, Chris Pine, and Olivia Wilde. Like I thought like what could possibly go wrong, right? And to be honest, the film is okay. Like it's probably a C plus film at best. Um, it's entertaining, but it's not original and it's not groundbreaking. And not all of the cast has a phenomenal performance. In a high level way, those are my thoughts on the film. I do want to get into it a bit more deep. So if you haven't seen the film and you're interested, if I was to describe this film to you, I would say it's Stepford Wise meets The Matrix meets Midsummer and the Metaverse. That sounds strange and that's what this film is. So if that sounds like something you'd want to watch, then go for it. Um, but I'm going to get into spoilers, so let's get into it. Uh, this film is, like I said, the film has a pretty good cast, but it lacks in performance from some of the stars. So Florence Pugh definitely shines in this movie. She's a rock star. She gives a phenomenal performance. I really liked her as Alice. Harry Styles, who plays her husband, I, I think that's where they missed the mark in the casting. I don't think he was really the right fit for this role. And I do think Shia LaBeouf would have been much better because he has a much more range. There's two different sides to the character of Jack that needed to be expressed. And I don't think Harry really executed well here. Uh, Chris Pine is very dependable lately in his role. Like he gives us all a performance. Uh, there's nothing really to take away from it. He was pretty good in his role. Uh, Olivia Wilde leaves a lot to be desired actually as well. She was really flat and she wasn't charismatic. She played the character of Bunny and I feel like for someone who's playing the mature like older sister in the neighborhood, I feel like they needed someone who is charismatic and sassy. Someone like Mila Kunis who still has that vibrance to her. Olivia Wilde just kind of, I don't know, she, like I said, she was just a bit flat in her performance and I think she was the weak link here. In terms of the plot, this is not a new concept. The idea of women being oppressed by men and having to overcome that oppression and getting and then getting their comeuppance like that's not new we've seen that many times uh i think it was better executed in the stepford wives so here we have alice and jack living in this community where everyone is in a tight everyone is very tight-knit and all the men work for the victory project they all work together they all leave at the same time and the wives all stay home and they're left with the mystery of what do their husbands actually do? Because the husbands say it's classified and you know this is how they're affording this great lifestyle so follow the rules and everything will be fine. And so the wives just, they cook, they clean, they go shopping and occasionally they'll do a dance class and they just make sure that they're home in time to have dinner ready and a drink in hand for when their husband comes home and make sure that they're available for whatever their husbands want in terms of pleasure, whether that's physical or going out to parties just have to make sure that they're available to their husbands. And on the surface, I guess this is someone's fantasy. This is their ideal, ideal way for society to be. People have their gender roles and that's just how life is. But what really gets you in the first part of the movie is the mystery of what the husbands do. And as we're progressing through the film, we get to meet Margaret, who is one of the wives who kind of 
hasn't adjusted to life here. She's been asking questions and stating out loud that something is wrong and they don't belong there. And that's kind of caught the attention of the authorities. So they're constantly trying to work with Margaret. They make her seem like she's sick, like she's mentally ill. They've encouraged other women in the community to kind of stay away from Margaret. She's been shunned socially. No one wants to talk to her. And then our main character, Alice, actually empathizes with Margaret a little bit because she also is having this gnawing feeling that something isn't right. And Margaret really does try to reach out to her, but Alice ignores her. And as a result, Margaret ends up killing herself because she can't stand being told that she's crazy anymore. And that really actually causes our Alice to unravel. And Olivia Wilde does a phenomenal job here in capturing the unraveling of Alice. There are some, and this is where the horror element comes in because as Alice is kind of losing it, we're seeing just how, the, we're seeing the toll it's taking on her mentally. So she's feeling like the walls are closing in on her and Olivia Wilde beautifully illustrates that, right? Or she's feeling like she's suffocating and we get to see that. And I thought that was really well done there. Another part of this mental unraveling of Alice is that she starts getting the attention of Frank. Frank is the founder of this community. He's the leader. He is the employer of the men. He and his wife actually oversee everyone. They consider everyone to be a family. They have tabs on what everyone is doing. So Frank kind of confronts Alice and says to her, like, you know, your feelings that you're having, they're accurate. Like there is something that's not right here. And I was hoping that you'd be the one to challenge me. So he goats her into actually having a bigger mental breakdown in front of everyone. And it gets to the point where her husband actually has to report her to the authorities so that she can get mentally recalibrated so she can be reintegrated to society. And while she's going for that mental recalibration, we're actually given the big reveal. So they're actually in a simulation. So Alice has been in the simulation against her will. Her husband has actually, in the real in real life, her husband has tied her up to the bed and sedated her and put her in the simulation. And every day when Jack leaves for work in the simulation, he, what he's actually doing is exiting the simulation to go work in the real world so he can afford to pay for the simulation and then come back to Alice in the simulation, which is really trippy and weird because it's like, it doesn't really make sense because his whole reason for putting her in the simulation was because he couldn't get a job and they're having hard times financially. And so Alice had to work double shifts as a nurse to make ends meet. And Jack was not helping at all. He wouldn't cook, he wouldn't clean, he wouldn't uh, fix things around the house, like their hot water was down, so he didn't even bother to fix it. When she came home, an example is when she came home from one of her shifts, she couldn't even have a hot shower have dinner because he didn't do anything to help out and he was just like kind of feeling sorry for himself and taking his anger out on her and so his solution was to put her in a simulation so she wouldn't have to work anymore but then he got a job and worked for both of them to me that was kind of strange I, I guess his motivation was that he just didn't want her being the provider anyway so that was the big reveal there and when they've recalibrated Alice and she goes, at, once they're out of the splashback and they've recalibrated Alice and she goes back into the simulation, um, Jack starts singing a song that triggers her and breaks her from the mental fog again. So she confronts Jack and she's like, why did you do this to me? Like, I liked working, I liked my job, I liked making my own decisions. Like, why would you put me in the simulation? And he's just like, well, you work so much, I wanted to make you happy. And he, like, I don't know if it was miscommunication, miscommunication or a misinterpretation of what she wanted, but that was the opposite. Like, it's not paradise for women to just be cooking and cleaning and taking care of the house for men. Like, that's not paradise for them. So it was just another example of them showing that men completely don't understand women. So that was that. And during this heated conversation, Alice actually ends up killing Jack by accident. And... No one explained to her that when you're in the simulation, if you die there, you actually die in real life. So she killed her husband and has to flee. And she's told by Bunny, like, you gotta get out of you gotta get out of here. You gotta get back to headquarters and boot yourself out of the system. Because once you touch the outside of headquarters, you're actually able to leave. So we get this very interesting car chase as she's trying to exit the system. Uh, this was very reminiscent of Trinity trying to escape agents on the highway in the Matrix, uh, which sounds funny, but when you watch the scene, you can, you'll get what I'm saying because it's almost like these 
authorities in the red jumpsuits like spawn out of nowhere almost and they're just pursuing her so we have we have alice in her daring escape she gets out of the system she gets booted out um the other wives have their own awakenings and they realize that they've been forced into this simulation um frank's wife the leader's wife uh she ends up killing him I don't know if that's her getting revenge on him, if it's her taking over the simulation, if she always knew what was going on. It just leaves you with a lot of questions, so that's kind of how the film ends. Um, like I said, overall the film is entertaining, uh, but I just don't like the messages behind it. I don't like the story it promotes. I personally am tired of Hollywood trying to tell us that men are evil, men are horrible, men are out to get you. I think that it is fueling this fire of women being angry towards men and men not even understanding why they're angry. Uh, I think that we are tearing men down when we make films like this. Like, sure, it might be entertaining. Um, and yes, you could say, like, you know what you're getting into. It's clearly a feminist movie. Uh, but I think we need to stop telling these stories right now. I think there's enough of them out there. I think for the past seven years, we've been putting women on pedestals and putting men, like, down in the dirt. I think we need to make more movies where men are role models. Like, I think if you want to have men be strong, positive forces in society, then we should show them being that. We should not show them being sniveling, pathetic creatures like they did in this film. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things I take, I take issue with here. I just didn't like the message. And if I can get into a little bit of a rant about the director, I really felt like she did this film a lot of harm in the press tour. One of the things for sure that harmed the film for me, I didn't like the fact that she kind of dragged Shia LaBeouf into it. Like, sure, she cast him, it didn't work out. He had scheduling conflicts. I really didn't like the fact that she said that it was because he was unstable, um, because she was just using his drama, because he's having a lot of personal issues right now, and he obviously has a lot of personal work to do. He sounds like he's very remorseful. If you want to check out his podcast with John Burnell, where he discusses his problems, like, I don't think it was really appropriate of her to try to profit off of his his struggles and to say that like he's such a bad actor or he's such a loose cannon that we couldn't have him in the movie. I didn't like that. I thought that was a cheap shot and that was dirty of her. I also didn't like the fact that she brought up Jordan Peterson and said that she based Chris Pine's character off of him. Uh, that just goes to show that she really doesn't understand what Peterson is about. Uh, if Jordan Peterson met Jack Jack's character in reality, he would have really tried to get Jack to pull up his socks and be a better man. That is Peterson's message, is to be a better man, to be the best version of yourself. If your wife doesn't want to be physically intimate with you, you have to ask yourself why, right? Maybe it's because you're a disgusting slob and you need to stop being lazy. It wasn't about him being an incel. It was just that this guy didn't want to do anything to him better himself and just pity himself. Peterson would say, wake up. Like if you're resenting your wife because she makes more money, then get out and get a job and make money. If your wife is taking a lot of the financial, like taking on a lot of the financial responsibilities, then you need to step up and do things around the house. Like Peterson would say, make yourself attractive. He wouldn't say, kidnap your wife and uh, kidnap your wife and put her into a simulation where she gets to be suppressed by you. That's not the idea at all. Like Peterson has a wife and he has a daughter. Like he would not want anyone putting his daughter in a submissive position. Like that's not the way you would do things. His message is be a better version of yourself. Yes, men and women do have roles because men and women have different strengths. You can definitely um, have changes in that. There can definitely be compromises and interchanging in the roles. That's, that's life. Like it's not linear. So I don't really like the fact that she tried to rope Peterson into this message that she was making in this movie. I just think that it's another gimmick to promote the movie and it was just unfair. Another thing I don't like about Olivia Wilde is just the double standard. So she took this really weird attitude that she didn't want to answer to any of her behavior uh, during the production of this film because she was just like, you know, you wouldn't ask a male director, but you're asking me because I'm a female director. It's like, no, it's kind of inappropriate as a director for you to be dating your male lead. I mean, when it happened, that, and this has happened in the past where it was questioned by the male director. An example of that would be um, with Snow White and the Huntsman with Kristen Stewart. She got into a relationship with the director while filming and they both got into a pretty hot water for that and he had to answer for it. So it's not to say we don't ask that of male directors. Another thing I didn't like is that she had this falling out with Florence Pugh and started like all this smack talk about her saying that she was too demanding or thought too highly of herself. 
And when she was actually asked an account about it, she just refused to acknowledge it. And when directors have big falling outs with their actors, they're asked about it as well. So I didn't really like that. You know, she has this whole, she's pushing this post Me Too era feminism, and she doesn't want to have any accountability just because she's a female director. I didn't like that. I put a bad taste in my mouth. I will not watch the Spider Woman movie when it comes out that she's directed, directing for Sony because I don't want to have this perpetual message of men are terrible and I don't like what she stands for. So those are my thoughts about Don't Worry Darling and Olivia Wilde. Let me know in the comments below if you disagree with anything I've said or if you thought Don't Worry Darling was a 10 out of 10 movie. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you have any recommendations for movies for me, please let me know in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram at Watch by Ashley. I'd love to have a chat with you. But that's all I have for you today. So if you like the content here and you enjoy what you're watching, please give me a like and subscribe. It'll help me grow the channel. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.